Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News starts now. A new phase starting today. More people in Detroit will be eligible to get COVID-19 vaccinations. What you need to know to get your shot. But first, the FBI receives information that armed protests are being planned at all 50 state capitals, including right here in Michigan. The Michigan State Attorney General sounding the alarm. Michigan is. And ready to impeach one week after rioters invaded the U.S. Capitol, Congress takes action against the president for inciting the insurrection. And that does top our news this noon, which is a special edition of our new newscast here at 1130. The House has convened today to begin the process of impeaching President Trump for an unprecedented second time. The single article of impeachment charges the president with incitement of insurrection following last week's Capitol breach that left five people dead. These are the pictures from the House chamber in Washington, D.C., with the House's Democratic majority and the votes of at least five Republican members who have said that they will join the impeachment effort. The measure is certain to pass. A vote is planned for later this afternoon, this coming as the president expresses no remorse. Jay Gray breaks it all down from Washington. The center of our nation's government is off center right now. Troops actually sleeping overnight on the grounds of the Capitol. That symbol of freedom locked down as for the second time in his administration. House will be in order. Lawmakers bring impeachment charges against President Trump. If these actions are not worthy of impeachment, then what is an impeachable offense? This is a reckless impeachment. This will only bring up the hate and fire more than ever before. The official charge is incitement of insurrection. And we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. After the president rallied supporters just before their deadly attack a week ago today, a speech the president says was, quote, totally appropriate, though a growing number of those in his party disagree. And unlike the first time he faced charges from Congress now, prominent Republicans, including Liz Cheney, say they will vote for impeachment. The Wyoming Congresswoman writing, there has never been a greater betrayal by a president of the United States of his office and his oath to the Constitution. The impeachment measure is expected to easily pass and will move on to the Senate. And there are indications that this time around some Senate Republicans could vote in favor of impeachment. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell telling the New York Times that he's pleased the House brought up charges and that he believes the president has committed impeachable offenses. Jay Gray, NBC News, Washington. Jay, thank you. Officials have charged more than 70 cases in their expansive investigation into the Capitol riot. The acting U.S. attorney in Washington says that the scope of the crimes is, quote, mind-blowing and the wrongdoers will be held responsible. He also addressed the possibility for further violence. As we look ahead, we are also aware of other planned protests in and around the upcoming inauguration. The Department of Justice fully supports and will protect the exercise of constitutional rights. But I want to send a clear message to anyone contemplating violence, threats of violence, or other criminal conduct. We will have no tolerance whatsoever for any attempts to disrupt the peaceful transfer of power on January 20th that our Constitution calls for. We will have no tolerance for any attempts to forcefully occupy government buildings. There will be no excuse for violence, vandalism, or any other form of lawlessness. At the same time as we have been reporting, the FBI has received information that, quote, armed protests are being planned at all 50 state capitals in the days leading up to President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration next week on January 20th. Here is what Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel has to say about the threat and why she thinks that Michigan's capital remains unsafe, in her words, despite Monday's ban on the open carry of concealed weapons. Michigan is ground zero for those uh, who are wishing to take over a state government 
Um, Michigan certainly is a, a soft target. I actually received a, uh, an email from a Facebook representative who monitors traffic uh, that is geared towards uh, some of this anti-government activity. Uh, and she said, I'm worried about Michigan. I'm exceedingly worried. And when you say that you can only carry concealed if you have a license, we don't have anybody to even check if you do have a license. We have no metal detectors. So if you were to bring an explosive device into the Capitol, if you were to bring multiple weapons, as long as they're underneath a, a coat or a jacket or in a bag, no one would ever know about it. Um, and you know, it's gonna be a free for all in there. We just don't have adequate security when we don't know what kind of weapons are being brought into the building. When the legislature is meeting, according to our Open Meetings Act, it has to be uh, accessible and uh, open to the public. This is all very troubling. Six foot fences will be installed around Michigan's state capitol in Lansing, and that will be up by this Friday to guard against the possibility of violent protests or rioting that we've heard our plan, at least protests for this weekend. It's happening on the recommendation of state police. Meantime, the 101st Michigan Legislature begins their session today. That's where we find our Rod Maloney this noon. And what's happening over there? Everything quiet? Yeah, pretty much, Rhonda. I mean, there is a, a, a strong state police presence. In fact, we can show you some video that we just shot a few minutes ago. A lot of state police officers, particularly on bicycles, uh, circling the Capitol here. Legislators also filing into the Capitol right now as they're getting ready at noontime. They're going to get ready and uh, have their start of the 101st legislature. Many of the members will be sworn in. Some already have been sworn in. Uh, others uh, will be sworn in. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that they're talking policy today uh, as opposed to the concerns about security. Um, we will be talking about security later, but in the meantime, uh, the new House Speaker held a briefing this morning, Jason Wentworth, along with the Speaker Pro Tem, Pan Hornberger from Macomb County, uh, where they were talking about some of the legislation that they would like to see passed uh, in the days to come. And it had to do with uh, ethics, about how people feel about their legislative representation, about politicians in general, and about getting more transparency into the government here in Lansing. And so they're both pro providing uh, legislation having to do with ethics and also the lame duck session. House Bill uh, 4001 says that a member cannot vote on legislation if he or she or his or her family members have an interest in it, that if they can benefit from it, they can't vote on it. So I'm proposing a House joint resolution that says any bill considered after the November election and an even numbered year needs a two thirds vote to pass. This would create more transparency and help us make sure that anything that passes in lame duck has strong bipartisan support. Now, those are proposals. Those have not been run through the legislative process yet, but that's what they're talking about. They want to take care of here. In the meantime, there is some concern over security. The fence is going to be built here on Friday, we are told. And uh, legislators uh, were sounding out today about the conditions uh, as it pertains to the Capitol Commission, about the open carry, much like what the Attorney General was talking about. We'll have all of that coming up on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. Reporting live from Lansing, Rod Maloney, Local 4. A lot to cover, Rod. Thank you. Also making headlines, formal indictments could come as soon as tomorrow in the Flint water criminal investigation. Sources are telling us that former Governor Rick Snyder, along with other former officials, have been told that they will face charges and to expect initial court appearances soon. It is still unclear what the exact charges will be, but the expectation is that they would either be charged with manslaughter or neglect of public office. The other officials expected to be charged are Snyder's aide, Rich Baird, Nick Lyon, who was the health director, and Howard Croft, who ran the public, the Flint Public Works. Let's take a look outside because we have sunshine and maybe even some peaks of blue sky in and around the Metro Detroit area. The sun is shining over downtown Detroit, as we can see. Brandon, how's it looking in your neck of the woods? <laughs> a little hazy, milky sunshine. We thank Rod Maloney for his live shot to show us what snow looks like. Remember snow? Believe it or not, we do have some in the forecast. Not for today. It's more of the hazy sunshine 
with some cloud cover, certainly. 35 at Metro here before noontime, 38 in Howell, 37 Port Huron and Monroe. Winds are a little bit of a problem out of the southwest, 5 to 15, so it does keep wind chills primarily in the 20s. But we're going for a high of 42 today. Another day tomorrow in the 40s, and then we'll all remember what snow looks like. Rhonda, coming up. <laughs> okay, we'll prepare ourselves, Brandon. Thank you. There's much more to come on this special edition of Local 4 News, including Sean Lay. Rhonda, great to see you on this morning right before the noon newscast here. Listen, guys, big day for the city of Detroit. Vaccination starting right now at the TCF Center Garage. We'll take you inside and let you know how it's going, and it's going very well.